In the last episode, we experienced a strange bug with uh, unit pathfinding. And uh, I believe the workaround is to just make sure that your troops don't all have to navigate through here. Because I believe the problem is, uh, if somebody is uh, navigating here and a troop or one of their fellow soldiers or more of them actually block like this passage, for example, they, they path through here and suddenly this gets blocked. I think that's what throws off the, uh, the pathfinding that much. Any Chinese here now? Nope. Nope. And I can only reiterate how great I find that. Uh, also, I'm not sure if yeah, there's Chinese here, but we don't need those guys. And I don't like hiring those because, I don't know, I feel weird about hiring spies as proper generals. I mean, I do it sometimes when I, I think the uh, enemy is trying to spy on us. But I don't like doing it in, in such a scenario. Also, 27 is not the kind of leadership skill I wanted here. Okay. Did I reset that? Yes. Good. Uh, where was I? Right. Yeah, so that threw the pathing off. And I, I really like how you can just look at everything in the end and you know uh, what nation they are and, and what kind of troop those people are. You know if you have the... You don't necessarily know if you have the technology for those. I mean, to be honest, I I only know I have the uh, Carthaginian and the uh, Egyptian berserker techniques. I might have one or two more, but I, I really didn't pay attention anymore. And those, those are like, I don't know, maybe I have and maybe I don't. It's not that important to me. Uh, you might want to attack this or something here that attacks you. I think this is incredibly uh, an incredible lack of compassion or of, of uh, solidarity with your, your fellow squad mates. To just shoot at the building when, when they're attacked by a bazillion frightens. It also appears that this part of the map is entirely empty. We haven't seen any people coming from there. So how long have we been playing here? 13 years, so we will get a very, very low bonus this scenario. <coughs> if we get any. But he's down to 160. Uh, those values might uh, uh, might actually lead you uh, mislead you, though. Uh, so don't trust those too much. Uh, the enemy might still steamroll you with 160 military. I was about to think he is trying that here, but he's not. I believe he is trying to save this lair. And as I was going to uh, to say, he might still make it and he might still kill you. Why do you only have 13 people? Uh, if he moves his troops properly and if he keeps them together, then he has a good chance of actually kicking your ass. And uh, you should never forget that. Underestimating your enemy is always the surefire way to die. There's nothing else I can say there. That's the surefire way to get killed. Or to, to mess it up. Okay, four, and there you go. And then this again. One, two, and the rest will grow pretty quick on their own. I think 50 is kind of a, a cutoff value for population. Like once you have fifty in a in a city, it's pretty much doing fine on its own, and it it grows pretty quick on its own. Look at that resistance three. Those people are going to topple over if somebody just looks at them. Funny. Why are you riding so far ahead? Or oh, driving, I guess. Oh, 
also think the AI is doing an okay job in, in those mass uh, skirmishes. Although uh, I wouldn't say that's a, a mass skirmish. It just looks a lot bigger than it probably is. And I think it's interesting how, how quick those those battle lines resolve. Like You don't have two armies that bash on each other for hours on end. But yeah, they just meet and, and pretty quick you can see which which group is basically winning. And that's something I also really enjoy. We've, I've seen strategy games where you really have that way, where two armies are just dishing it out for hours on end. And uh, that's kind of boring. Also, uh, in the uh, in some of those games where you actually attack buildings, and uh, I don't need that. Uh, and it takes ages to tear them down because they have so much health and, and your troops do so little damage against buildings. I mean, for example, in, in Battle Realms, it can be really frustrating if your your flame uh, troops have died and... Uh, oh, look at that, he seems to have something down here. Uh, if if your, your fire troops have died and well, it's raining and... Uh, they you can't just set fire to their buildings and and your your melee troops have to just hit the damn things over and over again and it's taking so long oh wow we've found the mother load of Grocken. and thank you for that luckily only this troop was uh, harmed by the earthquake and it didn't even seem to be that harmed by it yeah, everybody, just just grab an enemy and, and attack him. Today would be nice. Uh, those lucky few were attacked or were hit by the earthquake. I'm not sure if you count that if you can count that as a divine sign or something. I mean, I, th I think if that was an actual Egyptian troop, they would probably say, "Okay, the gods don't want us to be here. Uh, maybe we should just leg it." I mean, an earthquake was probably, uh, I think earthquakes were a pretty big thing. I mean, all kinds of disasters were a big thing in ancient uh, in the ancient world, but still, an earthquake was probably one of the top things. We would say, okay, no, this is clearly not wanted by the, the divine. Uh, need to get away from it. Also, I think we just lost somebody. Yeah, we lost one. Why are half of you not shooting something? Anything. I was just praising the AI and now they bugger it up. That's typical. So you should not praise the AI. <laughs> and my general was killed by the plague. That I believe never happens to your king. At least I would hope it doesn't. I've not actually seen it happen to the king because that's that's like a massive uh, hit to the kingdom. I mean, you know, they that hits the loyalty of everybody and uh, the kingdom itself pretty hard. Okay, do we have any good leaders here? No. How about here? You are an amazing leader. Have a replacement. Go here. Build yourself a nice four. And live like a dwarf. Actually, don't, don't do that. Although it would probably be interesting. Okay, this is a Greek cavalryman, which we can't use. He, he's not that good at leadership. And uh, 44, actually, that's also not that much resistance, but I don't really feel like doing that now. <laughs> okay. And also explains why we didn't get any peasants from down here, because we don't have any Greek cities, and you don't just get peasants who hope that you might build a city for them. Uh, with one exception, there, there is a random event that you get uh, a bunch of... Um, you get a bunch of... A civilians in a wagon. Sometimes you have wagons joining you. I've, I think we've had this in the uh, uh, in one of our 
single player games look at that he's built a new tower and his military is beyond uh, below 100 now so I think we can just uh, rush him now uh, you help attacking this we'll just rush him into the ground now and I believe this is actually yeah, I think we'll just wrap this scenario up and uh, I'll, I'll save the game and then we'll uh, we'll see what the next one leads to. I think we might also lose some terrain in the next uh, interlude, I believe. Because we have pretty much killed all the uh, single area quitzons, which is kind of... I think it was a smart move to do that because it, it eliminates enemies. And I'm not sure if the, the enemies fight among each other at some point. Oh, well, we, we found the deposit. The first deposit on this map, by the way. Which kind of makes me think that this was actually kind of intended to be played more like a... Uh, game where you, or a map where you just have no cities and you have to slowly uh, you have to basically move your troops in a way that you end up uh, or you have to use your army so that you just liberate every city and then go from there which is most certainly possible but i believe this way is a bit safer especially with egyptians Although we we still have a bit of an iffy situation uh, financially, which could be resolved by just using that mine, but it's still a pretty weird situation. We can't really uh, afford not going to war. We can't afford not killing frightens for a while. Oh well, that was a bold move. And he just wasted his one shot with that tower. He just totally wasted that. Uh, he fired at my mine. He should have frozen those guys. He should have uh, wounded those guys. He could have done something useful with that tower, but he hit that mine. And this tower is not going to get another shot. Also, this was a fair bit of life force that was just basically wasted by this shot. So it was really just goddamn stupid to do of him. Okay, let's get more military going. We don't need more military. Oh, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Move here, please. I actually want to select everybody in this uh, squadron, which is just right-click. I was pretty happy when I learned that because it helps you sort out squads after a, uh, a large battle really easy. Because you can just right-click on any group or on the general and, and he will mark all his soldiers for you, I guess. That's really convenient. If you, if you have, like, uh, if you have had a big battle or even that bit on the beginning where you have all your troops just standing there it can be a bit fiddly to uh, to bandbox I think is the word all of them okay king still okay so I tend to prefer that way uh, I tend to just right click them and, and sort them out I should probably just send my uh, my king alone in somewhere and let's see if he really does the, the multi-shot thing I'm somewhat sure they, they would do it but of course you, you really wouldn't see it in, in this uh, setting actually where's my king can I get my king out here don't we got a frighten here I don't need a frighten okay give me my king uh, let's only have the king for now and do something stupid.
Okay, I'm going to ignore that and I'm going to break off the video after we've... Uh... Actually, I'm going to just... I'll play it safe and uh, I'll only do this quick test before I uh, end up... Okay. So... Okay, will you do multi-shots? Um, enemies? I'm not sure if you can actually multi-shot here. Oh well, screw it. <laughs> Get in there, guys! And you... Get in there. Those layers shouldn't be really well defended, so... I'm, I'm confident in uh, sending those, those less trained people on them. I also wish we got a Chinese leader here. Still haven't. And I don't want to build a lot of inns. Like seriously, there's no point in doing that. Oh wow, there's a big battle inbound now. However, those are merely... yeah, those are merely... Beginner troops, so uh, not a big threat to my really damn experienced uh, army. And while it's it's not possible to to outnumber any amount of troops, uh, <laughs> having veterans against newbies certainly pays off. Like that, there is a certain uh, threshold at which the newbies will kill you, especially when they get uh, to surround you and, and basically fight in your back. But most of the time there is not going to be that much of a deal. Most of the time you, you can just, just wipe out any amount of, uh, of, vet of newbies with a veteran uh, army. Especially if you move them good. But yeah, the, the, the presence of uh, berserk attacks, like this this fiery arrow here, and um, certain other abilities, just it just makes a lot of a difference, and it just helps you so much. And I've actually had times when I had a, especially Grokken veterans, uh, I've had a single player match where I was uh, playing a Grokken Quitson, and was fighting against a ridiculous force of Bragma and <laughs> for quite a while they couldn't even touch my group because I had like two or three layers full of Grocken of, of pretty good veteran troops and they were just using this this uh, this big stone you've probably seen it here they they, they have a berserk attack with a, a bigger stone which they have to launch with two hands and uh, they were just doing that a lot of the time and they weren't even touched by most of the enemy army. They, they sent uh, a lot of troops as well. I'm not sure how many. It wasn't that much, but yeah, it was pretty hilarious to, to see those Bragma all die way before they could do anything. And I think that's what they have the uh, uh, the Bima hives for. It's basically, it's this ridiculously quick unit that... Uh, that kind of, I suppose, it, it substitutes the, uh, the range attack. Anyway, do I, want, do I want to break off the episode here? And we almost have this anyway, so let's just keep going. You get a longer episode, kind of in uh, exchange for the ones I lost here. Okay, we just missed the all high. Is a shame, but we'll, we'll make do. We'll we'll take those in, uh, in exchange. I'm not sure where they're going, really. And we got a wagon load of Celts because why the hell would you not? That is exactly what we really didn't need. Especially because okay, we have one Celtic Derivid. That'll have to do. Okay, you. We'll wait for him to start building the four, and then we'll just settle next to that, like this. Okay, he was going down here, so I guess there's another layer over there. Yeah, that seed of power will get to use. Actually, no, we'll just 
do that. Okay, all the wood and the four have been healed. That's actually great. That means we can use those to clear out the area a bit quicker. Okay, something is supposed to be here, I think. So once everybody has arrived there, we'll go looking for the enemy. I think the old high should be somewhere here. Oh well, let's just comb the area. Am I recording? I hope I am. I think I am. How much? Yeah, he ha he's down to 15 military value, so that's not too much. I'm not sure if that's actually more than... Wow, his all high got away. Not sure where he got away to, but he got away. It makes me angry. Not sad, it makes me angry. I want to wrap up this scenario, and the old high is just escaping me. Also, what's in, what's in this direction? And yeah, we really don't seem to get any... Um, any resources in this entire map? Well, there's a Chinese leader. We can we can take that. I mostly kind of want to do this because I I'm hoping for more um, technologies, more more berserk units. You can never have enough of those. So stop stop building that. Also, is that built by the all high I would hope it is because I think he doesn't have more than the all high anymore 15 is I think a reasonable amount for the uh, grok and all high although I'm, I'm not exactly sure how the military value is actually uh, determined I know it's it, it increases with uh, the skill of your units because I, I had times when I was basically not increasing the number of units I had, but I was in, but they were increasing in skill, and the military value was just climbing up. No, that's just an auto. It's an X auto, but it was an auto. Okay, could you go here? Actually, there shouldn't be anything in there, I think. Okay, let's comb the area. You! Stop it. Okay, anything over here? I wish there were units with bigger uh, range of view. But I think every unit has the same uh, vision radius, so there, there's no better scout unit, except of course a quicker unit which can uh, cover more area in, in shorter time. But have that, there, there's no unit that you would consider a scout. I mean, those are pretty excellent scouts, by that definition. Ooh, look at that. There's another another layer. Where are those, those guys coming from? I'll have to keep an eye on that. Also, I have a fly on my screen. I don't like flies on my screen. Uh, I think this is just an expedition into no man's land, really. Ooh, they're coming from there. Everybody go here. Sharp turn, go there. You attack those bastards. Ooh, there's his all high. There is his all high. You grab that layer. Uh, 
Okay, I also hope that this uh, showed you how to deal with uh, superior AI armies. Humans will probably move their troops a bit smarter, so you'll have a harder time with those. I've actually played against somebody on multiplayer a long time ago uh, who liked actually backstabbing you. So he, he allied with you and eventually he would just move troops. Uh, I think it was also a friend of the Fog of War for that reason. He would just move troops to your... Uh, around everything of your... or near your borders and just, just rush you. And that's... I think that's kind of no fun. I have an ally, allies who just say, uh, eventually, okay, now now we'll be at war. <laughs> it just sucks if you, if you don't have any any real uh, like role play justification for that. I just dislike it. Although he did know a lot about the game, he was uh, actually aware of some some hidden patch notes. It was kind of amazing. When I read that. I mean, I, I had discovered a few things already, but this guy knew like everything. It was creepy. And there, there are uh, some, some patch notes that were also some information that's basically not available in the manuals or in any of the uh, patch notes. I'm, I'm not sure why, but it's just then. And, and yeah, I'm not sure where it is now. I don't think I've, I could find it again. I didn't save that by any means. But why would I? Okay, could you kill this guy now? Seriously, he got away. Stop letting him get away. There we go. Ugh, he had another guy. Come on, seriously. Just wipe everything out. Less standing there, more shooting. There we go. Uh, we got the same message here. I mean, it was this, basically the same scenario. Treasures, palaces, sweet meats, and princesses await you upon your return to the capital. They don't actually have to be of, uh, of uh, noble blood if they're pretty. I mean, I'd be happy with a sexy lowborn as well, but uh, who knows. Okay, we get a whole lot of three bonus. Because it took a while for this game, and my defense, the enemy was attacking us pretty late. Yeah, we lost a whole lot of uh, civilians here. I'm um, a bit ashamed of that number, but it's it's fine. We also lost a building, which kind of sucks. We actually lost two, but I think buildings that are destroyed while they are constructed don't count in this statistic. Okay, so we got this out. And now... Oh, we're still on the move. Okay, this and this. I can't actually deselect the king. So... Uh, I can also move around artifacts. Not that I want to. <laughs> he actually has a combat value of 300 now. That is ridiculous. Okay, uh, we'll have to ally with the Carthaginians again. I just clicked that away because I, I found that we already had this uh, description, and uh, it was basically the... Actually, that was the, the scenario before that. So the, the, the one before that was actually uh, also the land of the elephants. So we are technically already allied with the Carthaginians. Anyway, I'm not going to play this now because it's really late. Actually, uh, <laughs> you're going to hate me for that, but it's it's uh, 2.18 in the morning. So, uh, yeah, I just spent about two and a half hours recording. Hopefully all of this episode's actually recorded. I'm going to break this off. This was a pretty long episode, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!